worship, if you want to stand up with me. I'm just going to pray real quick before we go into that. God, I pray that uh, that you just be with us tonight through um, just for the worship and the sermon, God, that you would inhabit this place, God. You ha- inhabit the praises of your people, God, and I pray that um, we be able to brush off anything that's happened, anything that we're going through, and be able to focus on you tonight um, and give you the praise and all the glory that you deserve, God.
Okay, I know we were in the staff meeting, we were really concerned about this one part of that video, but we know that you could handle that because what children see, they do. And uh, I say something that the Lord put in my heart after a couple of years ago that it's intensifying. And it's, there's only one thing worse about a man, a woman, an adult, Christian, getting free from their past sins is when they see their children fighting those same sins and it kills you and the enemy loves causing confusion about that so let's let's pledge our heart to uh, to stay up to date with Jesus seek after him not take anything for granted and um Try not to be more than this far away from him. And then entice each other to good works at school, on the job, wherever it is where we see each other. And uh, so, okay, we're about to do something that I hope I don't regret. So uh, we want you to be able to see. So if, if, you, if you wouldn't mind, Chad, uh, could you get those up now? Could you zoom in on, on that? And we might have to ask you if they can't get that working. It'll be worth it if you could go over on the Starbucks side, okay? You know, go over there, okay? All right. Or is that port? Okay, I should have asked Don. Okay, port side. Everybody come over here so you could see. And that we try to push this thing, even with wheels, it's very heavy. So um, this way you don't miss anything and you'll you'll see the reason for this non-orthodoxy plan of action we have Microphone. There you go. Okay. Sunday, we talked about a 40 day challenge. Now, I know the zany world is doing their thing. It's a big deal about dumping a bucket of ice cold water on your head for awareness. And that word challenge kept ringing around in my head. And I thought, well, we should do it. And we should do it with our 40 day challenge. Those that weren't here Sunday or missed the boat, here's the boat. We're starting a 40 day challenge tonight. We, uh, if you go to our Facebook page, our website, or Enoch Prayers Facebook page or website, you'll see the reading schedule. The ushers also have a reading schedule for you if you don't do Facebook and you don't do technology and you want it on your refrigerator. Tonight when you go home, if you're behind, if you've missed the boat, tonight when you go home, you're reading eight chapters. It starts in the book of Matthew. This 40-day challenge, Volusia County, are you all over here? 
Okay. <laughs> this 40-day challenge is to submerge ourselves in the Word of God. That was Pastor Nate's idea. God bless him. I was happy for a bucket of cold water on my head, but no, we're going to submerge in the Word. So um, we are filling this pool, this baptismal pool, with ice, and then we are making a declaration before we do that. Okay, here's the declaration. Are you going to join us? If you're going to join us when we go to do this, you're going to stand up. You're going to do your 40 days of being submerged in the word. This isn't going to cost you anything monetarily, but it will cost you your time. We are preparing for the king. Okay, we are preparing for Feast of Tabernacles. And so we say to Volusia County, return Volusia County to the Lord. And we're standing on Acts 3 that says, with repentance and I, I don't have the scripture memorized. You know it. We're going to look it up. <laughs> Listen, with refreshing, come, uh, with repentance, then comes refreshing. And times as we return to God with repentance. And, for, you know, Volusia County, we're going to talk about this. First Assembly, this is not just about you. This is every pastor that stands with us in Volusia County. Our friends at the Sanctuary, Mark. Our, our friends at the Lighthouse, Paul. And, um... Pastor, Rabbi, and uh, Beth Judah, all of you, we're saying Volusia County, we're saying Be Ramona and uh, the Chadwicks, we're saying return to the Lord. I don't ask you to jump in and do anything I'm not doing. It's a big deal for me to read eight chapters of the Bible every day. And so that's what we're going to do. Now, does anybody have anything else to say before we do this? We're in. We're in. We're in. I hate cold water. I hate it. Want to say anything, Pastor? exactly how I know how to follow that. <laughs> I'm just glad the microphones weren't closed when Pastor Nate kind of just dove in there. But it seems everything's working okay. So if you guys want to go back in a time of worship, join me, stand. We're going to have some fun worshiping God because that's always fun. I love it. I think it's Make it loud. 
Just, just look up to the cross, okay? 33 years, almost 34 later, I, I really try to set my heart for ministry where people don't look for, you know, one man show or look at man at all. And God uses men and women, but just don't wait on me. Wait on the Holy Spirit with you. Will we just worship? Sometimes, we know all the time, God's looking for a man or woman that will stand in the gap for their society, their city, their family, their church. Sometimes God's looking for somebody to just be a fool for him. Matter of fact, he said he would take the foolishness of this world and confound the wise. Now, just something that's been happening the last year. It's a two-edged sword that I, I feel it's, it's piercing, it hurts. David said, it was good that I was afflicted, that I might know thy statutes and judgments. And sometimes I ask, I just, I just want the Lord, I said, please, I can't take this. Let's take this burden away. And yet, I, I don't want him to. Because it keeps me at a safe place near him. It's, it's almost like if, if you don't deal with a wound properly, if you could bleed out. Sometimes you don't take out foreign object there's timing for that and 
there's times that there's a cry in my heart that says, God, I just take this burden. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't get any easier, Lord, uh, the older I get. But he, and he, he told me it gets better. It gets better, and it's worth it. And uh, you don't want, you know, you don't want him to remove his presence from you, never. I just, I just think you need to come up now and share what we, what we talked about. About how we really feel things are going to be until Jesus returns for the church in America. And, and I know you're thinking, oh, gloom and doom prophets. No, we're not. You know, I know if we preach slosh and ice cream, the place will probably be filled over four times over. But I don't care about that. I want to, I want to see the bride of Christ, not a bunch of bridesmaids. A lot, of, a, lot, a lot of movement in America should have a whole lot of bridesmaids, but we need a, we need a bride, okay? And uh, God is preparing us, and, and, and it's been Sunday. It's been, I think, this summer, this long, hot summer. And uh, here, you've got one there. You'll hold that. Uh, and I want to I make sure we get this right. You know, my wife does it to me. You know, I've made it a practice since I've been saved to try to memorize, outline the Bible, and try to memorize portions of you know, their context. But what, so when she puts me on the spot for one verse, I get, I get messed up. <laughs> but that's I, all on tape, here, too. That's all right. It's okay. <laughs> all the whole staff going, what's the scripture? <laughs> uh, where's my glasses? Okay, here it is. Everything in context, right? Three. 317. And now, brothers... Sal, you told me those glasses. <laughs> Bill's ready to throw me his. I, I don't know what will make it faster or farther. All right, Bill. Thank you. We need a good prison minister like you. All right. Oh, these are nice. I, I usually get the I usually get the Dollar Tree ones. This is what a real pair of glasses are like, huh? All right, here we go. And you know, open your Bibles to Acts 3. And I think this is so profound because the church is so new. It's so organic. It's so new right now. They go from impartation to giving a defense of the gospel that isolated them, for them to become the real body of Christ, Acts 2, 42 through 47. And then immediately at that happened, miracles start happening. You know, Peter and James, silver gold we don't have to the crippled. But that which we have, we give to you in the name of Jesus. Arise and be saved. And yet at that accelerated organic church, it wasn't long before there would have to be a warning for them to get repent, probably in case they thought they were something, and get refreshed. So you see chronologically from the birth of the church, this organic movement to verse 17 in Acts 3. When you read this, I see it, what Jesus said, that a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. When you just look at, at these three chapters and the last six verses of Luke 24, you see what Jesus meant. That's why we've got to be careful with dates. Acts 3, 17. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all, all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore. He's already talking to brothers in this organic new church. Repent, therefore. Turn again. Talk about daily bread, daily repentance, daily consecration. Repent, therefore, and turn again that your sins may be blotted out. In verse 20, that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. That he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring and you know, I, I, I'm so excited because 
has, has everything we're possessing, do I stand corrected tonight before the congregation for the theme for 2015? It's restoration, not possession. About four hours ago. Okay. Honey, in such nice moods, you have a way. <laughs> Won't touch that. <laughs> the times are refreshing. About four hours ago. At the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus. Hey, Jesus just ascended. He just ascended. The church was birthed in fire. Community. And his most precious form was manifested, verse 42 through 47. Miracles become the first evident of business no longer as usual in the opening verses of Acts 3. And yet by the same chapter, this word is have to be given. And Jesus, is, they're speaking to him. He's coming. Prepare yourself so he could come. The Christ appointed for you, Jesus. Send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus. Verse 21. Whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of the holy prophets long ago. And this has never been more real to me as a Christian, okay, as a servant for the Lord, as right now. So we go into preparation, and then we go into restoration for 2015. Honey? The theme for the Feast of Tabernacles is Explain that for I, you I, folks. I will. They, they, I will. They may walk into a synagogue. I will. If you, yes. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we celebrate, it's going on 15 years, one of the feasts of the Lord. And it's called um, Booth, feast, feast of Booths or Tabernacles, or the Feast of Tabernacles. And it goes on, on the a lunar calendar, so it changes anywhere from September to October over the years. We've been doing, celebrating Feast of Tabernacles for 15 years because God started to talk to us about it. And um, it has evolved, but it, it's not like I get it. It's not like we all get it. It's not like we're a messianic church trying to do something else. It's, it's just one of our speakers this year, he made it pretty clear to me um, the other night, the other day, he was here. He's one of the presbyters that he serves with my husband, executive board for Volusia, this area. And he said, Renee, he, and he'll probably tell you this, he's opening, don't say, who it is. don't say who it is, he's opening on Wednesday night. Our feast celebration, which biblically is a seven plus one day feast. That's how it was explained to me by Rabbi Jerry who's now in Spokane. All right, it's a S Spokane. I never said it right. I'm from New Jersey. G give me a break. Okay. Anyway, um, seven days of tabernacling with the Lord. And in that tabernacling time, they would erect a little booth. This is the Israelites, ancient Israelites. They would erect a little thing, much like we've done year after year in the corners. Okay, they didn't really have the lattice work that we have. But... It was to remind them that it was the Lord who took them through the desert, the wilderness, and he provided for them, and he was their everything. And that is why the Lord tells them to remember when we were really close, when you had nothing and it was just me, and I took you through 40 years of this desert. Jews all over the world will erect a little booth every year during tabernacles. They put them on their porches. They, they do. And our speaker this year who's opening for us, he said, Renee, I was a new pastor. I was 25 years old in Texas, and the Lord spoke to me, I want you to tabernacle. And he didn't even understand the word. And he said all that to help me out because I said, you know, we've been doing this for 15 years, but it's, it's like the Bible says when Moses is read, there's like a veil, a dullness that comes over. And um, it's like I read it every year. I get taught every year, but it's like it doesn't 
sink in. Like, I couldn't fully explain to you. I can give you everything I read in the books. But it's like God just wants us to take a time during the year, besides what we pick as our prayer and fasting time in January. This is a time ordained by him since the beginning of uh, the Jews. And he said, this is one of the feasts I want you to do. And he also says in, um, is it in Zechariah? That they, they go up, Zephaniah? Um, that, that in the millennial reign of Christ, we will all go up to Jerusalem and celebrate. This is a feast that we'll be doing when we pass through the veil. Okay? And so this church, yeah, I mean, we've been just saying it's an opportunity to be with God. And, and it's not, years ago we put up actual replica of a wilderness tabernacle. It was so cool. We put this big tent in the back, and then we erected, like, the outer court, the inner court. We did the halal psalms as we walked up. We, we just did everything they did in the Old Testament in the wilderness tabernacle, just reenacting and being under the stars for, like, three nights. It was so cool. We want to do that again. But for now, for this year, we, we'll tabernacle in here. But that's not going to stop any of you if you want to walk around the property set and set up tents if you want to. We are encouraging people. Take your vacation time. Take your family time. Bring your children. It starts on a Wednesday night. We start with a corporate feast. And then uh, we bring covered dish the rest of the time until Sunday. Sunday we'll have another corporate feast. And we usually close it out with one service on Sunday and then a feast. And that's what we present to the Lord. It may change, it may evolve, but it is a wonderful time. This return Volusia that all the, the elders of Volusia County that are part of the Enoch prayer, in, including your pastor and I and some other pastors, we uh, felt all, it's, it's all the prayer people throughout the county. This is a specific time in the Hebraic calendar that is called returning. This right now that started tonight sundown it's returning and it's a 40-day period that we're going to close it out with during what every jew in the world celebrates is yom kippur it is the holy day of atonement It is a day where they stand in the gap for themselves and they remember their sins and they repent before god it's a holy day it is complete um, fasting we are joining with the jews on that holy day to stand with them we're not praying for them, we're praying with them. Because th this is our roots. It, 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 this is the roots of our Christianity. They were all Jews. This is not something we came up with in Rome. We have tweaked it and we have changed it and every denomination in the world has done their stuff, but our, our forefathers in the faith are Jewish. And then the Italians were the next band in. <laughs> they were. Cornelius. If, if, if you can work with them, you can work with anybody. It, 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 but these are our forefathers. These are our fathers. This is their patriarchs in the faith. So with all that said, we decided, since people get squirrely when you start doing, you talk about feasts and this and that. We're not trying to make we, this a non-Gentile. We're a Gentile church. We just understand that. We know? come as we're grafted in. Like it says in Romans 11, we're grafted into the vine. And um, this 40 days then, for us, just fit perfect with the sermon he's had all summer, but like his last point was about the scriptures on Sunday. We know that people would just have a, a, a better, more fulfilling, richer life, all the things that God has promised us, promised us through life and godliness, okay, if we would know our word and read our word. And that's why this 40 days of submerging in the word, like Pastor Nate came up with, I was yelling up there because I knew the longer that I stayed in that water, the colder that water was going to get. So I wanted to just jump in and get it over with. It wasn't really so bad. But anyway, the thought was good. And, and that's just catching on to what the world would think. You know, that's nothing more than that. But I like the ice cold water because, hello, the church needs to do what? wake up and there's nothing like a bucket of ice cold water on you or nothing like an ice bath like many athletes know after a football game sammy used to have to jump in an ice bath 
Okay? There's nothing like an ice cold bath to refresh us, to wake us up, to say, hey, we might be missing the mark here. We might just be dull or sleepy or lazy or let the next. And so that leads me to my points. Is that okay now? All right. Two points that have been eating at me for a while, and I'm like, could I, could I just share? Okay, I actually have three points, but the one point I kind of talked to you about already, it was a prophecy that came around Mother's Day. It was uh, actually um, the Saturday of Bob's funeral. And it was a word from God that just kind of went, we went like, oh. And, it, and I kind of talked about this a few times already. I've definitely, I've read the whole prophecy to my Sunday school class, and I've told you basically what God has said in this prophecy, and, and I, I feel like, you know, you can read parts of it. I'm not going to hand it out to you, but he basically said the time of playing is over, and the house of judgment is rising upon the United States. Evil kingdoms have risen, fueled by the fire of lust and hate and perversion and pride and disobedience. The floods are rising, evil floods like mighty waves rushing across the land. And he also went on to say, and I think that this is kind of like makes you gulp. He said, my hand has been lifted, says the Lord. I no longer will I hold back on the waves of poverty and disease and hunger. Evil traps, troops are advancing across the land, approaching from every direction. But he said, I'll hear the cry of my remnant, my people. There is a remnant that will not bow to the gods of Baal. We are the remnant. And remnant, we must read our word, eat our word, get ready. We cannot be limping, wimpy, whiny, self-centered people if we are going to help the ragtags that are out there, people that do not know God, people that are just going to be just blown apart by this world and what this world does. We're supposed to have the answer. If you don't know your Bible, if you don't, are not submerged in your word, you will be deceived just like the rest because the road to destruction is wide. The road to life is a narrow gate. And few are on it is what the word interprets. I mean, I just read it this morning. I think I read it in my first seven, eight chapters. I read my Matthew 1 through 8. This is a good thing for me, I want you to know to like the discipline. So this is a force feed for me. I don't read and, and, and read the Bible as much as I, I should be reading. It should be like bleeding out of me for all the years I've known the Lord. But we're lazy. I'm not calling you lazy, I said we're lazy. <laughs> okay, and so today, it only took me 33 minutes. And I'm not a speed reader like Donna Carroll. It took me 33 minutes to read eight chapters. But, I mean, I, I'm letting this 40-day period be more than just read those eight chapters a day. I want to get closer to God. I want those times of refreshing, Pastor. And because of that, I'm, like, trying to eliminate the things that don't bring glory. And that's one of the things he said in the prophecy, that we need to peel back and peel off the things that don't bring him glory. He says, I'll hear the cry of the remnant, those of us that don't bow. But he says, my people must wake up. And this was a clue that I just, you judge with me with this word, all right? This, you judge with me. It says, as hunger spreads across the land, there will be a hunger arising in my church. And I will blow a mighty wind of the holy fire upon that church. There will be a peace that I will fill my church with, a peace to walk through the fire and not be burned. I am getting ready to flood my church with the things that we'll get as we read the word. Truth, holiness, righteousness, and joy. Awaken those that slumber. Now that is not the first time you've heard that word. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry out there on the internet, every prophet, every, everybody is awaken, awaken, awaken. We even had a Feast of Tabernacle theme, awaken, a few years ago. Awaken. How many times does he have to tell us? So if it takes a stinking ice bucket on our head or jump in a pool of ice cold water to make a point, it's all just to make a point, not to anybody else, but like to me. I made a point to me tonight. And, and like that video that we show that we'll show again on Sunday, right? Our children will follow us. We've, we didn't tell you, Pastor Nate didn't tell you, but our children have pledged for a 40-day change of the world 
and they're starting on Sunday. So it's right that we start by reading the word and fasting anything the Holy Spirit says to fast. And then let the children fall behind us. They are excited about doing acts of righteousness and goodness and changing their schools. I mean, it, it's a big deal. We've done it for years. So um, he says, for the Elijahs, I'm calling for the Elijahs to arise and forerunners of the gospel. Those that preach, we have to preach. Those that are called to teach, teach. Study the word so that we don't show, find ourselves ashamed not being able to even quote the address, let alone rightly divide the word of truth. That was just a slip. You know, we just were caught up in the moment. This man and all our pastors, they know the word. They, they read the word. They speak the word. That's what makes you safe here. You don't have a whole lot of fluffy here. We are not a trendy church. Now, granted, when the Holy Spirit said, pull out little hankies and pretend they're mini flags, we did that for a while. I was laughing about it the other day. I thought, my God, we used to run with sticks and hurt people. <laughs> Not on purpose. We weren't trying to hurt anybody. But we would run with a, a flag, just like they do during football games. And we would run and declare things that God would want us to declare. We were like crazy. And we would do it again if God said. We would do it again, but if God said. Not if our flesh decided or a nostalgic moment hits us. Boy, I really wish I loved running with the golden white flag. None of that. Because it'll be new things. It will be new things. I think it took guts to be a part of the church then. Because if you had a maniac people, and it wouldn't just be one. It'd be 20 of us. It'd be 50 of us. We'd be running around the church with sticks. With flags on the end and yelling things and scare, the, scare people. We didn't mean to, but we were zealous, and, and we, we've kind of come through some of those things. Thank God some of you stayed with us. <laughs> but um, we'll do it again if God says. We'll do whatever. We just want God, and we want to glorify him. We don't want to glorify this church. I said all that to say, this is a word-fed church, and you're not just going to get just things like nice little stories. You're just going to get the word of God which is what, what we need, what we're going to need to stand in this wicked day that's coming. So we study the word. Um, the Lord went on to say that we must consecrate, the church must consecrate itself to me. All forms of evil have entered the church, and, and he questions um, our stand for holiness. Because like Pastor preached on Sunday and the Sunday after, so the two Sundays back, in Timothy, he says, but the church looks like it's called to pleasure and the cares of the world that have consumed the church. The thirsty, dry churches have no life springing out of them. Worry has consumed the church. Am I not God, he says? Will I not provide for my house? Those with gifts of healing must arise. Fear must leave the body. Faith must arise. I will hold back nothing from my children. That's God's promise. All through his word, he was just reconfirming it with this word. My children must long for my presence. They have to hunger and thirst for righteousness and holiness. I will blow upon hearts. How many want their heart blown upon? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because, you know, the embers, they die down. But all it takes is that wind, that holy presence of God to ignite and that's what we all want he says he'll he'll blow upon our hearts i will those that have grown weary i will revive he says those waiting like anna in the temple i will visit like mighty waves of refreshing i will visit my church nothing of the world will fill the hunger that is rising in my church i said all that to say if you start to see a hunger issue in this nation remember this word that, that, that there will be, he will create. Only my presence, those called to, pro, uh, uh, I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but I, I, I just, he, he ends with the same thing he started with, which was, um, those I have placed in positions of authority no longer have to sit at my, um, he just ends with that the church has to stop playing church, you know, and, and, uh, there were many things that you have heard through this pulpit, through the preaching of the word, through other prophets. But it's like when he comes close and he tells you that again, it's like wake up time. 
in church, honestly, it's four, 40 days of submersion into the word. You know, and, and my devotions back about a month ago, two things that just rung in my heart. One was, because I'm studying the Sermon on the Mount, I'm studying it for five years in Sunday school. We have been, Denise Bordenga and I in our poor class, we have, tr we have trudged through it with two books, actually. And, um, you know, so I know pretty much Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And he talks about the time, we read it today. If you read your eight chapters today, you talked about them getting in the boat with Jesus. He falls asleep, and they're scared they're going to die. All right? That's in, like, Matthew um, 7, I think, right? Matthew 14. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side where he dismissed the crowd. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples. Here's my point. Going back to Pastor's sermon. Sin, suffering. Sin, suffering. Two issues that he dealt with. I'm not saying they're the same. I'm saying these are two issues for the church today. And we were challenged one Sunday to deal with the sin in our lives. And then we were challenged another Sunday to look at the suffering and what suffering does for us. And if you only if you're a baby Christian, you never grew up, never went to the next level, do you stake there, you, you shake your fist at God when something happens? Because you think, the way America thinks, even Christian America thinks, there's an entitlement mentality that God, de I deserve, because I'm a Christian, because I say I'm a Christian, I deserve to have this. I deserve to have that. The promotion, the, the job, the house, the car, the baby, and when people don't get the life, the life, a good friend of mine just was diagnosed with cancer, a friend of this church. And, you know, I said to her today, I said, you know, it's an entrustment, dear. Suffering is an entrustment. God doesn't do it to wipe you off the face of the earth. He doesn't do it to make you question whether he loves you or you love him. He does it because he trusts you to handle what he's gone through for the, for the sake of his glory. That is a hard thing. And it's a hard thing when you're not the one doing it and you're saying it. It's just a hard thing. I have had friends, close friends, my Bambi. Her deal, and Matthew so clearly said it during her, her funeral, her eulogy, that she wanted to suffer well. She wanted God to get the glory. My friend that I talked to today, I'm like, he must trust. He trusts you to be able to walk through this with him. Here's my point here. He made them get into that boat. He, did he know the storm was coming? We can be smack in the center of God's will and still go through terrible storms. If you're a baby Christian or a wow wow entitlement Christian, you don't think that way. You think, I'm doing what you told me to do, God. Why am I going through this? That is such insane babiness. But why are we like that? And I'm not saying I'm not giving to that sometimes, too. Do you understand? I need a friend. The Holy Spirit, God himself, every now and then hit me with a scripture and say, Renee, did I know the storm was coming? Were they in my will? Did I tell them to get in the boat? What was that all that about? So that he could walk on the water and glorify himself. And he was walking while the storm was going on. The storm's under God's feet. In other words, Daddy has it all in control. Can we get that through when we start a crisis? Because they are coming. And Pastor so beautifully said it last week and the week before. It will, how did you put that? It, it, it creates the character in people, suffering does. And so, by the things he suffered, Jesus learned obedience. Christ calls us to walk by faith through our storms. He's always right there with us. Please don't miss the important element of the story. Christ walked on the water before he calmed the storms. If he had simply calmed the storm, the disciples would have missed his majesty. And what a shame. His majesty was the whole point. We want Christ to hurry and calm the storm. He wants us to find him in the midst of it first. 
That is my first point. That was a month ago, but I've been chewing on it, chewing on it. And I'm like, God, help me not to fall into this. Wow, wow, wow. When things come as if it took him by surprise. So all your suffering is not all sin or warfare related. Sometimes he just needs to rock your boat for his glory, for his glory. And then the other point was about baby Christians, you know, since I'm kind of on that anyway. Hebrews 5, 11 through 14, but solid food is for the mature. Those who, by constant use, have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. That's Hebrews 5.14. Now, it's one thing when you've got baby Christians, and, and you, you can't try to make them swallow meat and get in that cafeteria line and eat this and eat this and eat this, and the, when they, all they can digest is the carton milk. Okay? Um, we're not saying to rush a baby along. But we are saying that if you've been a Christian X amount of years, and I would say, you know, the growth spurt, I, I don't even want to go there because I don't want you starting to think, oh, she's talking to me. I'm just saying, there is a place where you go to new levels, where you cannot be comfortable. But many of us get comfortable and don't want to move to the next level. And the, the, the writer of this devotion said that, it's like how nervous little kids get in Sunday school when they have to leave their Sunday school teacher and, and get promotion Sunday, and they get nervous because it's, it's a challenge. Um, the writer says that the Hebrew writer describes a similar scene. Believers who should have been ready to lead, ready to train others, and assume the responsibilities of mature. Christians are still squeezing their considerable weight into a nursery school chair because like the, the nursery school teacher said to the little kids that were all nervous look you're going to move on because look at how funny it would be if you stayed here and you got to be looking like me and look at what I look like sitting in this baby chair well we got Christians that do that day in and day out you've been a Christian a long time but you're still trying to squeeze into the nursery chair get that picture when you don't want to do something the next time. I don't want you to be thinking about anybody else but yourself right now. Americans, people in general, human beings, we don't like change. Women, you don't like change. You might say you do like I do. I say I do, but at the core of it, I don't like it. I don't like the unfamiliar. But God is about ready to do some very unfamiliar things with those that will study their word, read their word, be ready, 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 and say, yes, Lord. Can, we, can that be us, First Assembly? Can it be one of, it's other churches too, but I don't have a voice in another church. I have a voice here. And so, and of course, this is the rank and file on a Wednesday night, but, you know, we've got lots of good servers all around the building. It's just, it's time. Right? It's time not to be babies. It's time not to be self-centered, worrying about all ourselves. Let's, let's look for God to get the glory, whatever it is that you think that you are suffering with. It is a test. It is a test. It is a test. Can you pass the test? He's a loving, kind God. So if he withholds something, it's a test. If he tells you tomorrow, or they tell you tomorrow, you've got cancer. Can we be focused enough to know that we're moving beyond the veil in 60, 70, 80 years anyway? So while we're here, we're going to do it, we're going to do it good. Could we get the mindset that we are just not here for ourselves and our life and what we think this life is supposed to give us? Could we move through? It's my message from Mother's Day. I'll probably stand on it until next year. But can you be prepared to die to your flesh and glorify God? And know that, so what? It's not all fluffy here. You've got 70 years, 80 years. Some of us want to be around a little longer. But I am not put a stipulation on God that says I want to be along that long when I'm healthy. I'll take what he wants me to have. It's not all warfare. 
It's entrustment, suffering, going without, not getting what you want, when you want it. It's an entrustment, some of it, to see, can you, can you shine, children of the day? Can you trust God? He knows better. Could we? I mean, I, I'm talking to myself. Every single one of us crossed this place at different times in our life, and it's not just once that you get there. You get to go through these levels. So let's do it. Let's do it, church. Let's not be so consumed with what we, that lack, that lie. I don't have what I think I should have. And let's just live until he takes us home. Live till we have our last breath. And live hard for him. Finish strong. I love that, that shirt. I love it. All right? And that's my cry. That's all I got to say on the subject. Talking to myself. Yeah. Oh my God. A couple of years ago, Don and I were at um, Lake George, and we hear a lot of words, we hear a lot of sermons and things, but we were there, and it was really, I mean, it was bitterly cold. It was probably about a 30 mile an hour wind, and there was these, there's these birds called coons, and they're very cantankerous. They just don't like, they just, they're, they're all squawking and everything, and there's probably a thousand of them. They're just, and they're just making all this noise. But all of a sudden, there was like a command, and they all lined up. And we were like, what? What just happened? Those birds don't line up. And they just all lined up and began to follow the, the one in front. They, weren't qu they were quiet. They weren't squawking anymore. They just lined up and followed. So we hear a word. We hear a word. We hear the word. And rather than going like, wah, 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 you just need to line up. You just need to fall in line and fall in rank and just do it. It might be contrary to our nature, but we, that nature needs to change anyway. The command is given. You just need to line up and do what God says. Amen. And... Uh, God is so faithful. Uh, I'm really excited. I, I, and I don't suffer good. <laughs> I don't. I, I got to confess. You know, a woman could go through so much stuff. You know, I, you know, then all of a sudden, like, I do something stupid or get hurt playing ball, trying to be, do what my son does. And I'm, done, I'm like, oh, this is terrible. Oh, honey. Any sympathy from Renee, I tell you. <laughs> that is not true. But, but the thing is, is uh, yeah, I go. We have two main cemeteries in the land, you know, and and it's like right when I need a wake up call, I find myself on what's it, Beersford or Plymouth, and I'm reminded that little that little space between date of birth and death. It's this big, you know. And, uh, and I know, you know, it's amazing. It's not until you get older you start really work, concerned what you eat, watch cholesterol, eating healthy, going to the health food store. Is there no, you know, like, what's this going to do, you know? You know? Give me a little extra couple more years in this earthen vessel, you know, and I'm not getting down on on eating healthy, I, 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 I eat very healthy. Sausage with fennel, <laughs> pasta, pizza. You know, pizza's made with high gluten, gluten flavor, okay. But no, I, I, you know, I'm not allergic to it, you know. And, uh, and I do, I, 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 wanna, I wanna finish strong, I, I do. I work out four, five days a week, so I can eat, you know, I keep up with the young guys. You know, but, but the, the, the thing is, is that it's our nature, like Jesus says, to, to take care of ourselves. And yet he says, in all your worrying, are you going to add one inch to your height? You know, look how beautiful the, the wild flowers are on North Stone Street that a couple times a year, you know, right before you hit 92 extension. People pull over. We do. 
pick some of them, that, you know, not illegally, at least I don't think, and take pictures, you know. Beautiful. They're so pretty. I don't know what, what that guy does or what they do. And, and it's just, and God plants wildflowers. They're more beautiful than, than anything you could wear. And, um, and when we stand before the Lord and we give an account for that little dash, my God, I want to think for things that, that really matter, you know. You really want it to be the things that matter. You want to, yeah. So we're entering into my favorite time of the year. This really is. This is harvest. You know, from September through the three weeks of prayer and fasting in January, I, I got to confess, sometimes I just wish the calendar was like September 5th to the end of Jan January, not just because of cool weather, because of the, it's harvest time. We get perspective on the holidays by taking this time of Feast of Tabernacles. It frames everything. And then we go into such a thanksgiving, such to be thankful for, and connecting with people that don't have much. And, and then we do Christmas well, <laughs> like the Christmas movies. That we love it. We commercialize it to the max because people's hearts are tender. I confess, I, don't, I love it. Put all the junk up, you know. I got, I got plastic Jesus, plastic Mary and Joseph. My kids say, oh, my God, it looks like Christmas in the hood, Dad. Get rid of that stuff. 30 years old. <laughs> I still put it up. Retro's in. Yeah, and now, yeah, see, retro's in. I duct tape around, like, Joseph's head. You know. <laughs> no, really, I take it serious. Baby Jesus, some kids were like, uh, stole my baby Jesus. You know, that's when I had the gray 300,000-mile suburban, the old gray one. Remember that? I jumped in it. I ran him off the road. I lost it. I said, you could mess with Joseph. You don't mess with Jesus. I mean, the guys are this big. You know? That guy didn't call the cops. Just, that was like in the 80s. I would have I made news. I mean, you know, wow. It's a beautiful time right now. But the things that we do, are they worth the death of God's son? Can we repay and we can't, what Jesus has done for all of us. And I know I wear it out. And as I get older, I'll probably get you even more irritated with me. I don't care. It's fun. But my worst day as a Christian is so much better than my best day before Jesus. So stand up with me if you would. I'm getting out 12 minutes early. Offering. Thank you. Remember revival days? I get so mad. I would never take offerings. I'd forget. We just love the presence of God. All right, ushers, come on. I guess sit down. <laughs> you can sit down. Ushers, come on. I want to thank you for so many of you who responded to the suffering church in, uh, in, in Donsk and Slavinsk, where I was. And thank you. God won't be a debtor to you. And it's not always in a windfall of cash. It's his presence, and he knows what we need when we need it. Amen. Uh, you guys are awesome. I love it. Isn't it good to just to uh, sit at the feet of Jesus with each other? And some of you that are going to be doing a Feast of Tabernacle for the first time, that's what it is. We drive in and out. Some of the guys are make, cooking stuff out on the grill 3 in the morning. Then somebody says, ah, oh, make breakfast for everybody. Yeah. And we come and go. Sleep under the stars. Come in here. You see kids falling asleep. Little blankets. Worship sets going on. You know, it's just beautiful. You know, and it's a feast, not a fast. <laughs> fast comes yeah. later. We're doing fast now, you know, as the Lord leads you. And then we go into a feast of tabernacles. We have a, there's always food, good coffee. And day and night. You know, whatever you can make, you make it. And then uh, end with a big celebration on a Sunday. And then we go into the holidays. Light, night to light. Light to night. I think after 20 years I get that right. I keep saying night to light. It's light to night. We set up lights and hay rides and the kids come in there like zombies and demons. And we say, hey, cast them out. You know? <laughs> and just love on them and show them Jesus. You know. So. And we have so much to be thankful for. 
I love September to January because it's Thanksgiving. It's a time of Thanksgiving all the time. You know, and it's a seed for, for the following year. You know, Father, we love you. We thank you that we um, taste and see that you are good. Thank you that we have the privilege to, to give. Thank you. And Lord, we pray for those in authority over us so we could live a peaceful life. We don't curse them. We bless them regardless of what our flesh feels. And so we lift up the president, the vice president, the speaker of the House, the Senate, the House of Representatives, Supreme Court, the governor. We pray for all those um, people that uh, got elected last night. And Lord, yes, we celebrate because one of them is ours. Uh, we thank you, Lord. We, but as I told her last night and her husband, Angela Dunn, she said prayer is going to have to really intensify now. New levels, new, 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 new attacks. So we pray for those who have been elected, those that want to make a difference. And uh, we pray, Lord, that any remnant of Christianity outside of the ones that we don't know that have a remnant of Christianity, that, that smoking flax will be ignited by the conviction of the Holy Spirit and the effectual fervent prayer of the populace, the believers. Lord God, we want to see revival. We want to see our nations too young to die. But through it all, Lord, until the kingdoms of this world be exchanged with your kingdom, we do say your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And your will be done, not what we want. In Jesus' name, thank you for these gifts. Everybody said amen. 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 Pastor Carl, we have any uh, information uh, to give to people? You get to go, guys. Yeah, next Friday, next, excuse me, next Thursday, we start Mega Men again, three solid months up until the week before Thanksgiving. So we're going on, we're connecting with about 10,000 other men. There's going to be on, and we're going to be sit, uh, sitting in front of the screen. We might meet our first one here. It's going to be totally different. We're going to be, we're going to be, it's going to be just different. It's not going to be the way it was. We made a major investment, several hundred dollars for some curriculum to licensing and, and video. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. It's going to be deep. And now we'll go, yeah, first Thursday in September, uh, 6 to 8.30, 6 to 7.30 on your way home from work. <clears throat> Come by and be encouraged. And that we still, of course, Wednesday night going through the scriptures uh, and worshiping scriptures uh, on Wednesday nights, Sundays, bring your, you know, just, just, just practice for eternity. That's all. This is just a test. We say we love Jesus. And nobody wants to go to hell. Everybody wants to go to heaven, right? And we can't meet a few hours a week. Huh? Stand with me if you would. Seven minutes early. 7.53. Don't get spoiled. <laughs> Father, I thank you. We bless you. Lord, I thank you for your, who you are. Thank you for your goodness. I ask that you bless everyone that's here, Lord, in a special way. And, Lord, there's hundreds that are part of our family that aren't here. They're working. They're whatever. Bless them. Put a hunger in all of us, those here. Lord, the same message. There's only one church, even though we have a Spanish family. The same message, the theme's going on right now on that campus with our Spanish pastor, Pastor Boris, and our congregation there. And Lord, we thank you. The Barry on Sunday afternoons, Radius Church tomorrow night, Speedway Center. Lord, we thank you for our uh, Bishop Jackson on 770 Greens Dairy Road, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for that part of our family also. And, Lord, there's only one church in this, con in this county, many congregations. And we, we, we just throw ourselves at your feet. Lord, we lift you up. If you be lifted up, you'll do all the drawing. Lord, let us all challenge, take this challenge that we saw today in a funny form. Of receiving with meekness the engrafted word that's able to save our souls. And he was speaking to believers, James 121. Let us eat the word, enjoy it. As we do eight chapters a day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I will be posting it. I'll do my best to remind you on a daily a morning munitions. We'll be posting on Facebook. Okay? And you got the sheets of paper over there if, if you like the old school way. You can get them at the information desk.